Hi guys, uh, this is Johan from WI. In this video, I'm going to explain to you briefly what are the unique features of Sodwana Bay on the east coast of KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa. Uh, this reef complex in the Indian Ocean, which we as local South Africans uh, know as our only dive site, uh, Sodwana Bay region. And I'm going to briefly explain to you what makes it so unique and what are these unique features of this area. Before I do so, I want to just uh, remind you, if you are interested to uh, learn some of your fish identification skills, um, and especially if you're considering to dive in Sodwana Bay or even in other areas of the Indian Ocean, feel free to download the fish identification guide that uh, you can click on the link below and download that 45 minute tutorial free of charge. If you are interested to dive in this area, it explains to you what are the unique features you need to look out for um, in identifying the fish, most common fish species in this region. So just a quick orientation of where Sedona Bay is located. It's on the east coast of South Africa. Um, it's in the kingdom of KwaZulu-Natal, which is uh, on the border with Mozambique. Um, and that's on the eastern seaboard of South Africa. And that's on the warm tropical Indian Ocean side of the African continent. It's about 390 kilometers north of Durban and about 100 kilometers south of the Mozambique border. Um, it is near St. Lucia, which may, is well known to deep sea fishermen and uh, specifically for the big pelagic species that can be found in this area. Um, and then it is part of the Isimangalisu Wetlands Park, which is a marine protected area. Um, it is a multiple use zone, so you have divers there, you are allowed to do fishing there or controlled fishing. Um, and it's not a sanctuary, but it is a marine protected area, which, as I said earlier, really benefits the reefs and makes it it's part of the reason why it's such a pristine dive site and dive area. Another very interesting uh, thing about Sedona Bay is that it is part of, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it is part of the Isimangalisa Wetland Park, which then also links with the Maputo Special Reserve in Mozambique, which is a terrestrial reserve uh, where you have elephants and the normal enigmatic African wildlife species. So it's got quite a unique location on the continent where you have the Indian Ocean on the east and on the western side, you have the game reserves and the terrestrial wildlife areas, including the Maputo Special Reserve, just to the north of Sedona Bay. Another couple of interesting features um, near Sedona Bay is the Africa's largest estuarine lake, uh, Lake Sibaya. Uh, as I said, it's an in-water inland lake and it is the largest estuarine lake um, in the South Southern African region. It's also got the largest forested dunes in Africa. Um, and these uh, dunes are coastal dunes all the way right, right up to, 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 the, to the beach and to the coastal areas. And then, uh, yes, Savannah Bay, interesting, is the southernmost coral reefs in Africa. So it is quite far down south. Um, and therefore, what makes it very interesting is you have the warm water from the Agulhas current starting to mix with the colder Atlantic current or Benguela current from uh, the Southern Cape region. And you therefore have quite a lot of different fish species in this area. Main reef system is made up of uh, basically uh, four different reef complexes. Uh, and they are denoted by the mileage or the distance that they are located off the coast uh, from the central launch site in Sedona Bay. So you've got the two mile complex, the five mile reef complex, the seven mile reef complex and the nine mile reef complex. And as I said, this just denotes the distance 
from the launch site where the boats are launched for divers to actually access these reefs. Just a side note, uh, even though the reefs are between 9, and, uh, 40, nine to 40 meters uh, depth, uh, there are quite a number of deep canyons that are further offshore. Um, and that's, for instance, where you would encounter some of your other uh, deep dwelling fish species. Um, and even a few coral species that are found uh, down to about 60 meters. Um, so we do have these deep canyons that are further offshore, um, although the reef complex and the reefs itself are generally between 9 and 40 meters depth. One of, what, one of the most unique um, features of Sudwana Bay is that the coral reefs are actually not typical coral reefs, but they are uh, based on ancient submerged coastal sand dunes. Um, so these coastal dunes that you have inland on the terrestrial side actually over centuries uh, used to be covered in water in the ocean. Um, and those sand dunes that are submerged are actually covered in a thin veneer of coral. And that is what forms the coral reefs of our coastline. Uh, it's quite tough conditions for coral to grow. Uh, you've got quite a lot of storm and weather patterns coming, storms and weather patterns coming through this area. Um, and what's interesting is because of that weather, but we have about 60% soft corals on these reefs, which is quite high and quite unusual. There's a very high um, level of endemism and then very extremely diverse with, as I said earlier, pelagic fish, cold water species, as well as your warm water tropical species. There are around 1,230 fish species on these reefs, which uh, is a very high number, and then about 130 uh, different coral species. Uh, there's also a very wide variety of marine megafauna, your whale sharks, your manta rays. Um, these megafauna do come through here and you do have sightings of them at times, whale sharks at times, different breeding seasons, um, and then a wide and diverse number of invertebrates on the reefs, nudibranchs, etc. One of the very interesting facts around Sedwana Bay is that it is a site where the, what was believed to be an extinct species, the coelacanths, were actually found a number of years ago. Um, and they are quite common fossils that uh, have been found in this area. Um, and yet there was a specimen found in East London, uh, just to the south of Sedwana Bay in 1938. Uh, but as I said, they are now uh, prevalent in the Sedona Bay region. So what makes these uh, silicants so important um, and interesting uh, is that they have very high evolutionary importance because their fins uh, are lobed and very fleshy. Um, and they're almost more closely related to mammals than fish. They, for instance, the only living fish that has an intracranial joint, um, just the back of the head, um, and they also have a hollow backbone. Uh, so these are all features that you would associate with mammals uh, rather than fish. Um, and therefore they're considered almost as a transitionary species uh, between terrestrial and marine. These coelacanths are found in Sedwana Bay's deep canyons. Um, during the daytime, they would uh, generally rest in caves, uh, at quite a depth of about 100, even up to 500 meters depth, um, or they even migrate to deeper waters over time. They've been netted in quite a number of places in the Indian Ocean, just off the east coast of Africa, places like the Comoros Islands, Sumatra, even Madagascar. Another very interesting find in the Sudwana Bay region, which is a recent find, uh, which was photogra photographed in 2017, is a Sedwana Bay pygmy seahorse, or the Hippocampus nalu, which was first photographed in 2017 and then scientifically described only in 2020. Uh, these are tiny little 
seahorses. They are about 10 millimeters in height. And uh, these are the first Indian Ocean pygmy seahorse specimens that have been found and documented. And to put it into context, uh, it's almost like the discovery of a kangaroo in Norway. Uh, so yes, they are certainly uh, very unique and can be found in the Sudwana Bay region as well. So just some interesting features about Sudwana Bay. Uh, as I said earlier, if you are interested to download our fish identification guide, uh, if you're planning to dive in the Indian Ocean or even the Sudwana Bay region all the more, then please download the guide. It's a 45 minute tutorial. Uh, goes through some very interesting and unique features that you need to look out for uh, when identifying Indian Ocean fish in this region. All right, thanks guys. Your hunt from WI. Cheers.